Leader of the Opposition. Sorry. Mr Deputy President, I lead for the Opposition on the Superannuation Administration Corporation Pillar Authorised Transaction Bill. Uh, the Opposition does not support the legislation. Oh, well, I, I acknowledge those interjections. Um, we, uh, we oppose the legislation. And, uh, and Mr. Pre Mr Deputy President, I move that the question be amended by omitting be now read a second time and inserting instead be referred to General Purpose Standing Committee number uh, one for inquiry and report, again. quote unquote. Um, but with that, I also flag that should we be unsuccessful in moving this legislation into a committee to be examined in more detail, in a more leisurely pace, we will be moving uh, some amendments to the bill, in particular around increasing uh, the commitment to the Illawarra region and the continued uh, location of the pillar operations uh, in that region, and also directed to providing greater protection to employees of Pillar. Um, these are the same amendments that were prosecuted by the opposition in the other place, notwithstanding their lack of success in that place, of course, by, you by the government. <coughs> notwithstanding the fact that the, the amendments were not successful in the other place, uh, we will again submit them to this House of Review in order that uh, all honourable members from a broader range of parties have the opportunity of of examining them and adopting them, which would improve the legislation. Um, Pillar Administration is a New South Wales state-owned superannuation member administrator, and in particular it is a Wollongong-based company with about 700 employees. It has two main clients, First State Super and State Super. Approximately one and a half million people have their superannuation funds administered by Pillar. Uh, Pillar has a chequered history in which governments including the previous Labor government, have considered uh, selling or uh, offloading responsibility for Pillar at one time or another. It was found at that time that it was not going to return a significant uh, amount of money uh, and that was not proceeded with. In November 2013, Deutsche Bank was asked by the current Premier to complete a scoping study into the potential sale of Pillar after the company put up its hand for a $30 million cash injection to fund a technology upgrade. The scoping study was completed. Uh, as of December 2015, the state provided $12 million to improve the platform, and that scaled back program is now apparently half complete. Mr Deputy President, there was no mention of the privatisation of Pillar prior to the 2015 state election, but now it's up for sale to the private sector. The New South Wales Treasurer has said that a condition of the sale would be that Pillar would be required to stay in the Illawarra for another 10 years, whoever buys the business. And some of the provisions in this bill include uh, giving an employment guarantee of two years for existing staff. Um, now, as I indicated, the Labor opposition will be moving a number of amendments uh, to address uh, the situation in the Illawarra region. First of all, we want to ensure that the private sector entity that becomes the owner of Pillar pursuant to the authorised transaction uh, provides a guarantee that uh, Pillar's existing operations immediately before the completion of the transaction would continue to be conducted in the Illawarra for at least 20 years after the completion of the authorised transaction. In addition to this commitment to the region, uh, we will also be seeking an amendment that the Treasurer of the day, whoever he or she may be, uh, whichever political party they are from, will submit a report to Parliament each year updating the House on the status of those operations in the Illawarra region. We're pursuing these uh, amendments in relation to regional commitment and employment commitment is that a number of specific uh, factors are occurring in the Illawarra economy at the moment um, and uh, they need to be addressed. Um, there are significant issues facing the region. Uh, there is the loss of hundreds of jobs in the last few years in key industries, such as manufacturing, heavy industry, and of course the mining sector. What we're seeking to reinforce uh, is the relocation by the previous Labor government of Pillar to the Illawarra. We want to make sure that it remains a permanent part of the social and economic fabric of that region. We want to make sure, given the uncertainty around jobs and the big transition that the region is experiencing, that there is more certainty around the longevity of that organisation and its operations in the region. As I indicated, it was a Labor government that relocated Pillar to the region. Um, 
we want to extend that uh, regional commitment that the government is making from 10 to 20 years. Uh, we also want to make sure there's a proper monitoring system. Uh, we also want to make sure that uh, existing uh, employees uh, are given an employment guarantee of more than two years. We say five years is a more appropriate um, uh, length of time uh, if the parliament is to approve this uh, legislation. We are concerned, and the reason why we seek these uh, more extensive commitments is because uh, this government uh, in the past indicated or promised that it, the region would receive $100 million from the sell-off of Port Kembla. Uh, and, the, and the region is still awaiting the $100 million, notwithstanding the fact that that authorised transaction, the, the sale of Port Kembla, has well and truly been uh, uh, point of, exercised point of order. and uh, the money put the in point the... Of order. Parliamentary um, yeah, I understand that there is a wide latitude, but you're talking about a completely different matter, completely different fund, completely different issue, nothing to do with this bill. Uh, to the point of order, Mr Deputy President, I was expounding one of the reasons why we're seeking these extensive guarantees is because of a concern about what had happened in the past. It's, it's elucidating a key aspect of our approach to the bill. Thank you. There's no point of order. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so, the, so the Yellow War is still waiting for the $100 million from that other authorised transaction, so we seek these additional uh, guarantees for the region in this transaction. Um, if it is to go ahead, which, of course, we oppose. Um, one example, of course, is the Bull Eye Hospital. Uh, that was said to be funded under the Illawarra Infrastructure Fund. It uh, hasn't, hasn't occurred. Um, so we will, we will also seek to move an amendment to Clause 17 and the transfer of staff uh, from the public to the private sector. Um, under the proposed amendment that we, uh, we have lodged with the clerks, a transfer of employment would require a transfer payment of 30 weeks, uh, although it would still not require the consent of the employee. The employment of a transfer employee with a new employer uh, would be on the same terms as conditions as applied under the relevant award enterprise agreement or contract of employment that a pillar employee had immediately before the transfer of employment. In addition, under Part 4, Clause 17, Subsection 6, little a, we propose for permanent employees the employment guarantee uh, be lifted from two years to five years, as I indicated, uh, and under subclause 6b for temporary employees, the employment should be guaranteed for the remainder of the employee's uh, current terms of employment as specified in the arrangements under which the employee was engaged as a temporary employee immediately before the transfer date or the period of five years after the transfer date, whichever period would end first. Uh, at the moment, Mr Deputy President, the Illawarra, through no fault of its own, is going through an economic transition similar to that which occurred in Newcastle over the last 12 or 13 years. And it's shifting from a manufacturing and heavy industrial base to a more services, health and education base. During that transition, the region is trying to retain persons in employment so the regional economy does not feel the shock of so many job losses. Uh, we do not want to see a large number of workers lose their jobs, to see those wages go out of the local economy and the knock-on effect having a contracting effect on the economy, which again will lead into a sort of a downward spiral of economic activity. And I remind members that the Labor opposition uh, fought very hard for, to secure the future of Blue Scope in the region. <coughs> On behalf of the Labor opposition, we, I propose that we will increase the certainty and the fairness for workers by ensuring that Pillar remains a strong presence in the regional community in the longer term. We want to make sure that the workers for whom members on this side of the House have advocated and fought very hard get the protections uh, they need to secure their long-term future. Um, um, uh, we, we think these measures are sensible uh, and balanced. Uh, they're in uh, the same vein as those contained in the bill, although do not quite go uh, sufficiently uh, far enough. So um, uh, we think the appropriate course of action is for General Purpose Standing Committee number one to inquire into and report uh, on the subject matter of this bill in more detail. Uh, but if we're not successful on that front, then uh, the amendments that I foreshadowed and lodged with the clerks, we would urge one of the members to support.